Evening, everybody. Can I just do my usual audio check? So if you can hear me, um, either react in the comments box or say yeah. Superb. Thanks, Kieran. Thanks a lot for that. Bit of a departure today. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, Facebook is deciding to uh, not allow me to do events for some reason. I haven't figured out why yet. So um, we I had to make a decision, so decided that we'd stream um, through YouTube and see how this uh, this um, platform goes. Um, and um, tonight we're going to be, again, maximising four patterns um, that you, uh, well worth having a go with. Um, the first you can see here, which is a grey wolf. It's not a perfect example. We had a bit of a problem with this one earlier on today. Um, but um, but we'll go through all the proportions and the best way of tying them, um, materials um, and, and the techniques. We're also going to look at a fly called the missing link, which is a bit of a, a sedge pattern but with a slight difference to it. Um, the Palmino midge, or my version of the Palmino midge, which is a very easy, simple um, CDC-based fly with, a, with an extended body to it. Um, and then we're also going to have a look at um, an old favourite, which is the Black Pennell, one of the first flies I ever learned to tie many, many, many years ago. So um, without wasting any time, um, we're going to have a go at the uh, tie in the Grey Wolf. Um, and for this, um, I'm actually going to use um, an, uh, a light wire or a light all-purpose hook from Fulling Mill. Um, it is um, an old hook. It was their 1190 range, um, all-purpose, um, barbless here. Um, you know, um, look at that, £3.25. So um, somebody got a really good deal on those years ago. Um, and I like this particular hook for this, A, because it's barbless, but also um, because it's got this really nice long shank to it let me just get that focus back in for us um i think it's focusing on my shirt more than anything else there there we go that's better it's got this really nice long long shank okay um and um we're also i'm also going to use um a gray tying thread um, for this, it's a grey wolf after all. And this is um, a uni thread ato in grey, um, and we're going to use some various things. And I'll talk to you a little bit about Lee Wolf while we do this as well, because um, he's a he is a fly tying hero. But I'm going to start off in my usual fashion, leaving a couple of mils from the eye. It's really important with the wolf patterns that you do this because uh, it's very easy to quickly. Um, pack the uh, the fly and the main part of the body and the hackle and the wing really quickly. I'm going to bring my tying thread down in line with where the barb would be and then take it a little bit back up and then just get rid of the waist. Um, now, for the tail, Lee Wolf would have used originally, you would have used buck, buck tail for this. Now, I've used buck tail. Um, it's a nice material to use. But for this, I'm going to use grey squirrel, which I believe gives a similar sort of effect, but actually I mean, it's a bit softer. Um, and I'll, I'll show you why. Um, now, I'm going to take hair from the, from the bottom part of the, uh, the tail here. Um, it's not as long. And if I pull it all out at 90 degrees, I can get the tips to, to be closely aligned they're not going to be perfectly aligned i'm going to try not to stack anything here if i do do any if i do any stacking it's going to be hand stacking um lee wolf would have only hand stacked because he tied everything in his in his fingers um and he would have tied everything in from the eye backwards in the opposite direction to the way in which we tie it in with a vice um just to be able to trap everything in and he would have used materials that would have been readily available to him, sort of in Newfoundland, Alaska, um, uh, Labrador, places like that. Um, and this is a great pattern for when there's a, a, a large upwing um, hatch, 
may flies definitely um, to be able to uh, to mimic those now I'm going to take quite a large pinch that's too much and you can see that the tips aren't all lined up there and I don't want them to be totally lined up and um, Lee Wolf's pattern was very much reliant on the fact that the tail looked a bit scruffy because he, he firmly believed that when it was on the water and each part touched the water, it left a little dimple in the surface tension and therefore gave a, a, an extra trigger point, uh, more of a, an impression for the fish in the water. Um, so it says something for us always stacking things these days. Um, what I am going to do is just thin that out a little bit, take some of the longer pieces out, make it more manageable on the hook. There we go. So I'm lining up those there. Okay, and take a little bit more. I'm just going to place it on the top and just have a look. And I'll, I want my tail to be the length of the body. So quite a long tail. Um, and I'm just going to pinch grip it. I think I could just thin that out just a little bit more looking at it. Just take your time with it. Take any under hair out. That's better. That's what I want. I'm going to place it back on. And I'm going to pinch wrap with my first wrap and pull it down onto the top of the hook, making sure that it's not spinning round. It will have a tendency to spin. So you put your first couple of turns in just to hold it so you can check it and then work your way back towards the rear of the fly, making sure that nothing is spinning and then just tightening up more thread pressure just to hold it all out you can see that it's not evenly stacked there which is what which is um really what we're after and then i'm going to come in and i'm going to trim at 45 degrees and then just tidy up over those sections there now, Lee Wolf wouldn't have tied this on a dry fly. Um, he would have tied this on whatever hook he had available. And if you asked him, he probably would have just turned around and gone, I have no idea what hook I'm tying it on. Um, it would probably, it would have been, I, re I reckon it would have been a bit, a bit bigger than this. Um, because if you think about the, the size of the sort of the, the drakes and, the, and that they get coming off the, uh, off the rivers um, over in North America, you can imagine the size of it and he would have matched it and he only came up with three he came up with the white wolf the gray wolf and the royal wolf now for the wings i'm going to take another another section of squirrel i want quite a lot for this now it's really important here on our hook that we don't bring our thread too far forward we need quite a lot of room in front of the wings um, for the hackle and we're going to hackle behind and in front of the wings. And that's a, a big pinch. And again, no stacking there. But what I am going to do is just tease out some of those really long pieces and hand stack so that they are closer together. But they don't need to be totally uniform. You're going to lose some some of the, the fur. Take out any of the really long pieces you don't need. And we're after those tips by there. And take your time with your hand stacking. Just level them all up. Any errant pieces, just take out. And the wings, I'm looking again, length of the tail. And you can see I'm about two thirds of the way up. And I'm going to face them out over the eye. Pinch grip again. Down and up. Oh, see that span there because I let go of it a little bit too quickly. 
let's try that again hold down and back up and gradually just apply pressure to it while pinching to keep it on the top of the hook and then put the second and third in and I can tighten up you can then have a bit of a play to get it to where you would like it to be and now start to put thread pressure to bed that down and we're going to come in at 45 degrees and just trim those up now you could use um calf tail kip tail you could use um deer normal deer hair and um, could use cdc um, for the wings um, it's worth experimenting and what we get there with the wing being put in is we get this already this taper of the body here um, and I'm going to bring my thread up and then I'm just going to pull back the wings I'm going to get a few little fibers that are going to stick out and then I'm just going to build up a thread base and a bit of a dam just in front of the wing just to hold it up and it takes more than you think it's a very chunky fly and there we go and it sits up and you're going to get little fibers that are going to stick out so it gives you an opportunity to come in with your scissors and just trim those away Doesn't look like these ones want to be get trimmed. There we go. Oh, no, still didn't go. There we go. Trim those away. Don't worry if it pushes forward a little bit. That will get sorted in a moment. And then what we're going to do, well, you could leave it like that. You don't have to do the splitting of the wings at all. Um, but you come in and get your fingers onto it and try and tease it so it's in half. So you get half of it on on the left side and half of it on the right and then take your thread and pass it between the two and I like to put two wraps in so it's almost like an X wrap there and then I'm going to come around the other side and do exactly the same on the other side there you can see that we split those wings there now they are just holding down there so I'm just going to put a few more wraps just in front, making sure I'm, I don't have a big step because when the hackle goes on, it'll slip. And there we there we have those there. Now, you can leave it like that. We're not going to worry about these bits sticking out. We'll, oh, we can actually take that one. There we go, because they'll blend in with the hackles. Um, if you feel up to it, what you can do is put in, and this is the tricky bit, put in, whoop, treat each of the posts as a parachute and just put in one two three turns at the base and then come in i always find the one closest to me is the hardest one to do you know, once and the trick to this is to take your tying thread across like that and hold it away so it's not going to slip two Cross again and three and then come back around and make your way back to the tail there we go you can take a bit of time to just to push them up and you'll see there we have them in like that and of course we're going to be putting a hackle in there um, in a moment for the body I'm going to use muskrat grey muskrat which uh which comes from this uh, natural fur set which uh which i picked up um a long time ago um i'm going to use some of the grey muskrat but any grey dubbing will do um you don't want it too spiky um and it's quite a tight dubbing noodle that we're going to put in and up it goes now, I'm not worried about putting all of the dubbing that I need onto my dubbing noodle. 
because I can keep adding. That's why I keep some in my in my finger here. And what I'm going to do is start at the tail, and then I'm just going to loosely work my way up to about two mils before the wings, and then start to work my way back again, about two about three quarters of the way back down the body. I'm going to add in a bit more. So I'm, going to, I'm making it that much more of that taper of the body that we started with the with the un, with the waist from the underwings. So we're going to stop there and then take my way back up. So it's quite a chunky body. It's not all spiky. And I can see a few errant bits of um, squirrel just sticking out where I don't want them. And that's what we have so far. As I said earlier, it's a, it's a good pattern to have um, in your box ready for mayfly season. And they'll treat it like a mayfly. Um, and for hackling, I'm going to use two hackles. I'm going to use um, this rather beautiful um, grizzle and then dot it around on my desk here. I've got this lovely medium dun grey. I'm going to mix the two. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to do something which I don't do very often, which is I'm going to wrap them both at the same time. Um, I'm not too worried about it looking all really beautifully spinning out hackle. What I'm looking for here is an effect that's going to keep it buoyant on the water. Um, so I'm just going to tie in the grizzle to start. And then I'm going to tie in, oop, almost dropped that. I'm going to tie in the done. And I like to tie them in quite tightly behind and then just draw my wings back and then just tie them just in front. So they're not going to slip anywhere. They're all going to get hidden. Trim off those waist ends. And then I've got my two hackles pointing in the same direction. Um, one on top of the edge of the other. Now you can um, wrap them individually. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take them both. And I'm going to wrap them together. So I'm going to put try and put two, three turns behind the wings. Don't worry if they split away from each other. And I'm just going to bring it around in front of my wing and that will push my wing back as well and another two three could probably put another half turn in there four turns i've left enough space at the front to to form that head and secure everything in um, don't worry if you trap any little parts of the the barbules of the of the feathers and then I'm just going to draw everything back taking my time just drawing everything back you get the odd little bit that will stick up we can deal with those in a minute and then I'm just going to form my head working all of my way backwards trying not to trap as too many and if i do well if you've got a cauterizing tool i do have one somewhere i'm always worried i'm going to set fire or burn everything with it just drop those out bring everything back another little check on you i've got a i've got one there that i can get rid of And then I can hide any little stubby ends. There we go. And then, oh, I've got a bit of, there we go. I'm just going to whip finish. One, two, three. Come in with my scalpel blade. 
Now, normally I would give these a, a, a yank and a pull to pull them out, um, but they're quite thick stems. So I'm actually going to just put tips of my scissors in and just trim them away. And then the final final little touch, a little bit of cilia varnish just to secure those threads. And there we have it, our grey wolf with a split wing, a squirrel. And the technique for the split wing there is one that you can use with all sorts, um, um, with all sorts of, uh, of flies. So give it a go. Um, it's a great it's a great pattern, um, and will catch fish. And you can see that stubby tail there. That's got lots of different points that are going to be going to be touching the water. Can actually then just um, uh, if you run a a flame just across the bottom of here, you could just singe those those um, parts of the hackle or the lower part, um, and that will have a very similar effect. Okay. Um, hopefully that was a, a fly that you're going to give it, give it a go. There she is. It's one I'll definitely be fishing this year. Okay. Let's have a look and see, because I, I do appreciate that people may not have found us today. Um, so, uh, yeah, the picture is pretty good, isn't it? Um, Derek, might be missing a few people. Yeah, Dylan found us. Well then, Dylan. Um, it's great to have you here. Um, so um, that's our first fly. Now, our second fly for tonight um, is a sage pattern. It's slightly different um, to normal. And it's this little sage here. It's called, um, it's called the missing link. And if you tie it in sort of dark browns, um, it's often called a chocolate drop sedge. Um, and uh, I just thought we'd tie this one because I'm I'm really interested in giving this one a go on the river this year. I think it'll be really, really, really deadly. Um, so let's get tying. So let me just make sure I've got the right, right box. So I'm going to use um, a partridge clean camera hook. For this, I'll use size 12. Um And here we go. Let me just adjust. I do love these hooks. Some of my favourite hooks. You just love the curve on them, particularly for sedges. Um, I'm going to come in. I'm going to use um, the uh, Nano Silk King Cop. Uh, just like the effect that it gives. About two mils away from the eye, just working my way backwards. I'm going to stop when I'm in line with the hook point just there and I'm going to use my scalpel to cut to cut that now this has a, a tail or a shut up um, and you can use a, a polyon floating polyon now I'm going to use this grey antron um, here um, I just think it gives a really nice effect um, particularly when it splays out a bit like that, I find that the poly yarn really will, um, it really will uh, sort of clump together and be quite solid. Well, I know that's part of the point of it, but I like the, the shuck type effect, but it's too much there. So I'm just going to slim it down by about a third. And then I'm just, I don't want them all sticking together. I want them offset. And then, Take my time with that. And you can always adjust it a little bit later on. Pinch wrap again so it stays on the top. And then I'm just going to bring my tying thread round. You'll find that this bit does get in the way. So when you're at the right point, you can just trim it away. 
I'm going to keep taking it round the bend. So it's at a 45 degree angle with the with the hook point. Okay. You can have it long, you can have it short, you can trim it up a little bit. Just take my little bit off there. There we go. And I've taken that back up. Now, it's going to have a rib on it, and I'm going to use, for this, I'm going to use some um, uh, Semperfly um, Micro Metal um, in rose gold. Um, it's a new newish material for Semperfly. Um, it's got a braided core. And it's got a, a tinsel and a metal um, uh, um, surrounding it, um, which makes it just got to get find my right scissors. So I don't want to cut through my wire with my good scissors. But it's also really light. It's much lighter than than having um, a, a metal rib, just a totally metal rib. So I'm going to place that on um, and run my tying thread. All the way back down towards the tail and just put that out of the way and trim off the excess there we go and then we're going to put a body in and i'm going to use this um slf squirrel spiky dubbing um this is fox squirrel natural according to this um and it's got that spiky bugginess that we're looking for so again i'm going to apply my dubbing to my thread i'm not too worried about it being really tight and then i'm going to wind it up a couple of turns just reposition a couple of turns reposition and take that process all the way up i'm going to take it up to just at the point where the shank of the the hook just straightens and if you've got more on there don't worry you just take it all the way back you can build up quite a nice body on this There we go. And I'm going to finish there. And I'm going to take my, my rib. And I'm going to rib it in the opposite direction that I wound the dubbing on. You can see the spiky squirrel just sticking out there. Four or five turns, lock it in place, and trim off, and then just do a little bit of tidying up. And what we can do at this point is make this a little bit more scruffy, just pick it out with your Velcro stick. Don't have to be too heavy handed with it. There we go. Looking, looking spot on. Now, uh, for this, for the wing, I'm going to use some CDC. Got some Petit Jean CDC here. Uh, this is in um, yellow, old yellow. Um, it's a very darkish yellow. And I'm going to take three or four plumes, you get them there like that, that have, so that one could go back, don't want that one, not at the moment, I'll use that for something else, that's better, got a nice one coming up there, and I'm going to put these together, so that the natural curve of the feather, they're all in, following the same curve. And the tips are all aligned. 
you can see we've got them all there it's very dense it's very lovely all in there i'm just going to measure up the length of the wing now a caddis or a sedge has a very 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 long wing so you, you don't want a short stubby wing like that nice long wing like that give it as much flotation as we possibly can pinch wrap it to keep it on the top and then tighten up and because it's this this is nano silk i can put a lot of pressure on it and there we go and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pull that back there i'm not going to trim those off because i want those in a bit now what i'm now going to do is i'm going to put a hackle in i've got this lovely um, grade one mets cape here which is uh which is this beautiful brown um and i want a hackle that is definitely as long as the gape of the uh of the hook and i like this um, particular cape it's got this beautiful black bar down the, the lower ends here as well so you get you get some really nice um differentiation take off the really thick section trim off the weight some waste at the end here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring that back into the middle and behind the wing i'm just going to drop it in behind the wing should have done that in the first place i'm just going to tie in this hackle and make sure that it's fully tied in trim off the waist now wouldn't be one of my videos if i didn't get the andrew scruffy dubbing out gonna go for the um the the scruffy buzzer um because it's a cinnamony color but it's got these beautiful blue tones and red and in it i'm just going to take a little pinch of dubbing a tiny little pinch of dubbing Ooh, there she is and i can see that there's plenty of wraps in the middle there i just want to hide those a little bit you don't have to i like to i'm just gonna put a little bit of dubbing on there and just take one two turns in the middle and then i'm then i'm happy and then I'm going to take my thread closer towards the front and now I'm just going to build up a little thorax in the space that I've got quite a spiky thorax with the same scruffy dubbing up I go I'm going to build up under here, leaving myself about two mils towards the, the eye of the hook and just keep building. I want it quite chunky. You'll see in a minute. Just applying it a bit at a time. Just holding the CDC out of the way. There we go. And there we go. I'm just going to hold it there. Now, here comes the weird bit. So now what I'm going to do with my hackle is I'm going to hold the waist sections and the wing. And I'm going to leave some of these little nice bits sticking out from the CDC. And I'm going to wrap my hackle around both sections. And I'm not going to do it lots. 
almost parachute style, three times. I'm going to stop there. Uh, you'll notice that I brought my um, I brought my tie-in thread back in line so that I can very quickly tie in that hackle in that parachute position. Taking my time, making sure I'm not trapping down too many. There we go. And drop it back. It's looking good so far. Now that'll pop the, the wing up. Don't worry about that because that'll go back down in a bit. But what I am going to do is just nip off the end of that hackle that we, we wrapped around. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more dubbing. Don't want to pull too hard at this point because it will just bring everything up. Bring it all back. And then bring my tying thread around to the front. Now, what I'm going to do with these bits here, these tag ends, is I'm going to now bring them forward as a thorax cover. And what that does is it splits the hackle to either side. So it forms almost legs or antenna. Um, don't worry if you leave little bits of CDC sticking up. It's all part of the, the structure. Just taking your time. Oh, I'm trapped in a couple of bits of hackle there, which I didn't want to do. So I'm just going to bring that down just hold it in place two turns and tilt it all back give it a push down so that the wing pushes back and then i can come in and now i'm going to take these off but i'm not going to take them off flush i'm going to come in and i'm just going to leave I'm just sticking out the front. And then I'm going to tie in like that. And then I can whip finish. At that point, I'm just going to come in there, like that, and just take a moment to position. You can apply some, some varnish to the head. And the aim of the game for this is that when it's in the water, when it sits in the water, that, that it will be sat on the surface there with the emerging with the shuck and the body still trying to emerge and hopefully that will allow us to take some extra fish this year okay come in just looking at that just going to give the bottom there a little bit of a scruff There we go. Scruffier the better on this one. And there we have it. The missing link. Okay. Now let's see what else we've got um, uh, uh, up here. I um, hope you're enjoying these so far. Um, 40 minutes in, man. Two two flies already. Um, what was on? What was my next one? Uh, oh, it was the Palmino Ridge, wasn't it? Palmino Ridge. Now this is a really simple tie, um, but it's a good one um, for little midge sippers. You can tie them really small. 
Um, I'm going to tie this on a size 16. Um, fully milled Czech nymph hook, actually. Um, but it, it's fine for a little dry fly. But it's going to be pretty buoyant. Um, and for this, what have I done with my black thread? I don't know if I've got my black thread. So I haven't got any black thread set up. So I'm going to go with grey um, at this point. So what I'm going to do is going to leave two mils. And just take my tying thread back so it's in line with the hook point. There we go. Now, for the body, I'm going to use um, some Semperfly suede chenille, um, which you get, which uh, I sell on the on the website actually in these cards. And you get a good meter or so, which is more than enough. And I've cut a bit off already um, for this. There it is. And what I like to do with this is I just like to take the end, take a flame, and just singe the tip of it. And it tapers it. And the good thing about the suede chenille is that it will hold shape as well. And I'm looking for it to be an extended body. So about... Looking at that, about one and a half times the length of the top of the shank. And in typical fashion, pinch grip, pinch wrap, hold it down, tie it in, position on the top. All good so far. And then I'm just going to take a couple of turns just to secure that into place. And bit of a trim and then there we have it now it hasn't got a wing as such won't have anything if I can't figure out what I, where I put the um oh no there they are the CDC so we're going to put some CDC in here so I've got this little black bag of CDC, and I think it might be Petty John. I think um, Kieran, you gave me this. Um, I haven't got much, so I keep, I use it quite sparingly. So I'm going to take three, three plumes, um, and again, I'm going to line them all up like so, so I can get the tips equally aligned. I actually think I'm going to put a fourth in. On here. Fourth one in with the curve pointing upwards. And we're gonna have the CDC tips as long as the um, as the, the length of the body, and I'm gonna tie them in this way towards the back again, pinch grip. two, three, and just tie them in so that they are nice and secure. And when you're happy, you can really crank it down. And I'm going to come in and just nip those away. And then at this point, I'm going to do a little bit of a tidy up just to secure everything in place. Give me a level playing field. There we go. Now, I'm going to put thorax in. Scruffy dubbing comes back out here. Um, for this one, um, I'm going to go with um, uh, Highland Peat, um, which is a blackish coloration, with greens and very much tartan-like. Again, it's another one of my favorites. And um, I tie this on the peeping caddis, and uh, I catch there's lots of fish in this dark, dark colour. And apply it to my to my thread. Not too tightly. Maybe quite fluffy. And then one 
to trap it in it'll turn just to make sure it's where you need, want it to be and i'm just going to build up a thorax here i want it quite fluffy and we can always pick bits out here we go just take off that little bit there and then bring my thread up to the eye they could leave it like that um, but the whole point of this one, this flight, is that I'm going to bring these little sections of the wing forward. Um, I want to get as much of these little fluffy bits sticking backwards, like legs. And if you if you think about it, we're coming up into um, into Bibio time. Saint Mark's fly. The hawthorn. Put three turns there, and then I'm just going to lift the front, and then just use the thread just to cock those up. I've got these bits sticking out. I've got my extended body there. Just put another one in there. I had three whip finish tools a minute ago. Can't find any now. Oh, bit of dubbing just sticking on there. Two. Now, normally I would use black um, thread, but I didn't have any in my in one of my bobbins. Let's take that off. And again. Just give it a scrub. Bring everything back. Lots of profile, lots of indentation on the water. And that's going to sit really well, particularly if there's um, black gnats um, uh, coming off. I um, mean, white or uh, cream, you know, really small sizes. You've got a canis type pattern. Um, so, you know, you've got all sorts of, uh, of opportunities with a, with a fly like this, you know, all sorts of different colors. Um, particularly if you've got some wary sippers, um, you know, it'll sit very much in the water like that. Oh, sorry. Like that. So when they come up when they come up, obviously the hook is quite under the surface, but it's sat hopefully going to take some fish so that's number three of our of our four four flies tonight um it's nice to see that 11 people managed to find us which is absolutely great tonight um a uh, bit down on normal but hey this will be obviously because it's youtube it'll automatically upload um to to the channel anyway so um so people can find it now our final fly tonight is one of my favorites um which is this little beauty um, which is the black panel. One of the first flies that I ever learned to tie. Um, one of the, used to fish it prolifically when I was when I was a youngster because they were the ones we were we were tying, like the Invicta and things like that. Can't honestly say I caught masses of numbers of fish on it. Uh, a few perch on it in the reservoir in South Wales, in Clandegfed, if anybody knows that one. Um, and that was uh, that was some that was good fun. Um, so. In a moment, we'll get on with that. I'm just going to have a quick drink. Right. So we're going to go back to um, the all-purpose lightweight hook for this, size 12. Nice long shank for it. Um, I think we um, I think we neglect, as fishermen, I think we, we do often neglect the classic patterns, not just tying, but fishing with. They're there for a reason, and, and they've been highly productive for generations. Um, and, and, you know, I don't want us to forget about them. Um, you know, it's... Uh, I'm going to run into a problem here, because, again, I haven't got any black thread. So, if you can just bear with me, guys, I'm just going to set up a bobbin. Um, in terms of bobbins, um, my favourite bobbins are these right bobbins, if anybody's used them. 
Again, I can get hold of these through Lost Lake Fly if anybody's interested. Whether or not they're in stock, though, is a different matter because uh, they sell out really quickly. And they do them in a in a normal size, and they do them in a in like a, a, a smaller micro size, and they also do a magnum for um, for salt water pans. Um, I'm just going to take off this section without dropping it. Put my nano silk back in. Wind it all up. The tensioning on this is phenomenal, and the, the micro adjustments allow you to to adjust it um, to to be to be able to um, be really comfortable. Uh, I'm now looking for my. There it is, my bobbin threader. In it goes through the surround. There we go. And I'm going to use um, nano silk for this again. Just like the strength on it and the fineness, it doesn't build up any unwanted bulk on the fly. The only drawback is it can be very slippery. It's a great product from Semperfly. And again, available on the website um, at Lost Lake Fly. Um, you get over 100 meters so you know one spool if you get a spool of black that's going to last you like probably your tying career right so it starts off again i'm going to leave up to two mils in front of the eye and i'm going to bring my tying thread all the way back so to where it would notionally be in line with the barb of the hook because it's nano silk, I'm going to use the scalpel. Just run it along the edge of the scalpel because it will blunt your scissors. Now for the tail, make sure I've got the one. I'm going to use um, golden pheasant tippets. I do love these. Um, don't use them enough. I need to put them in more of my flies. You can add them to virtually anything that's got a tail. Um, and I've got one that I've started to use like this. You don't. You can see here that there's probably what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, about twenty to twenty-five pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it and I'm going to trim off up to the middle there. I think I might take a little bit more, which I did. Um, yeah, let's, let's get rid of that. There we go. And it's really important that we try and keep, no, that didn't work. It's really important that we try and keep all the barring together. Hang on, let's try that again. We try and keep all the barring together. And what I'm going to do is just roll it in my fingers so I get it barred up like that. Now, you'll see a lot of people, they'll tie it in over the barb, over the um, barring. What you really need to do is tie a long tail with the barring past the bend of the hook. Make full use of that beautiful coloration and barring of this particular feather. I'm gonna tie it down. I'm gonna take my tying thread all the way back up very gently keeping the waist ends all the way there you go no cutting there so i've got no abnormal stepping and i'm just going to bring my tying thread a little bit further back um for the rib which is hiding up on my left for the rib I'm going to use some extra fine um, Lagerton um, uh, silver wire. And there it is. It's lovely stuff. Um, and just got to be able to get hold of it. There it is. You don't need a, to take off as much as that. I will anyway. Just a little clip 
and I'm going to place it in on the side of the body and bring the tip in line with the body and then I'm going to make almost touching turns all the way all the way back down I'm trying wherever possible to ensure that I get an even underbody any sort of bulkiness in the wrong place and it will just look completely out of place you're looking for a almost a cigar shape um, when well, on your body when you've completed your fly okay now the next bit is i'm going to use some black floss for the body you could just use your tie-in silk but the nano silk's really fine and it doesn't give me the same effect and i want quite a silky effect um, so this is Semperfly floss. Um, it's as flosses go. It's fine. Uh, it does its job. Um, it's not as shiny as some of the others, um, but it will do its job. Um, what I'm going to do? Just taking that a little bit too far back. I'm just going to come in and under. and then bring it all over onto the top. And I've doubled over my floss. I'm going to hold it down across the top and very carefully just tie it down along the top, making sure I'm not making any unsightly bulges. If I do, I've got to go back and I've got to correct them and then take my time and come all the way back up. And now we're ready to start to form our body. I'm going to take my floss. I'm going to start to wrap it so it's flat from the tail towards the eye touching turns two three four five six seven eight and then i'm going to take it all the way back down again two three four five six, seven, and then, not surprisingly, it's taking my time, two, three, four, five, six, and finish and tie off. So you can see we get a very, very um, level, level body shape. Um, although that camera is so good that it is picking up tiny little imperfections, isn't it? Um, just nip that off and tie that down. Now I'm going to come in with my, my rib. And I'm going to rib it in the opposite direction. Two equally spacing between them three, four, five, I managed to get six in there, and just tie that off. And then just worry that away. And then I'm going to come up towards the eye. I'm just going to lay down a foundation of thread on there. So far, we've got our, our tail and our body and our ribbing. And now we need our soft hackle. Now, for this, I'm going to use some really nice, soft um, black hen. This has actually been dyed. 
so it's deeper black than, than, a, than a natural black um and i like this i like this particular one because it's it's it, it's got really luxurious feathers um and i'm just gonna that's a bit long i'm looking for the length of the 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 um hackle fibers to be the length of the body um not significantly greater than that um it does take a little moment or two to determine where the best place on the is going to be now that should do it i'm going to get rid of this really tough stem at the bottom i don't want that i'm just going to nip off a little bit there but like i would with a game bird I'm going to tie this in at the tip and place it under one, two, draw it back, put another one just on the other side. And I'm just going to put, oh, I've got a loose bit there. I've got two loose bits now. Yeah, that's better. Much better. There we go. And then I'm just going to come in. And I'm not going to trim this flush. I'm just going to leave a little stub because that will all get hidden. But it also helps to act as an anchor. And I'm going to take my thread and tie everything down there and take it to about one mil away from the eye. And then I'm going to come in. Now, I don't often use hackle pliers I am for this um, I've got these stone flow stone flow stone flow stone flow hackle pliers just gonna grab the tip it's very easy to put lots of pressure on this and break it I'm gonna hold it upright and I'm just gonna take a moment to draw all of those barbules back almost breaking the bonds against the um, stem because what I'm then gonna do is very gradually I'm just going to put a turn in and when I bring it back up, I'm just going to sweep everything back and I'm going to put a second turn in. I've got plenty of hackle here. A third turn. I'm actually going to put a fourth one in on this one. There we go. And finish there. And I'm going to wiggle my thread through the hackle twice. More than enough to trap it down. Come in, trim it off. Draw everything back. And then build up a Nice little head, it's going back over the, the cut part of the hackle. Taking your time. With Nano Silk, you'll find that you've got to take a little bit longer to build up the head because it's so fine. Um, there we come. One, two, three. And we're done. Trim that up. Grab my cilia varnish. For those of you that have been with me before, you know I do like using cilia for heads because it actually um, soaks in. To the tying thread, even the synthetics. There we go. And if at this point, like me, you're thinking, I think I've got a little bit of. Um, 
varnish in the eye. I'm going to use the, 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 the piece that we cut off from the hackle. I've stripped off the end. And I'm just going to use that to poke through and use it like a brush. Brush out the eye. There we go. And there we have it. A black panel. Um, lovely, lovely pattern. Um, and well worth having a go and having a few of them in your box. Well, I hope you enjoyed those tonight, guys. A um, bit different being on YouTube. Um, if you like and you're not a subscriber, uh, subscribe because it makes me feel good. Um, and I always like to uh, like to do things for, for as many people as possible. Um, we'll try and be back in our normal position next week, but um, who knows what would happen. Um, but um, if anybody's out in the water this weekend, I hope you have a very, very, very good time and you contact lots of fish and that you're able to uh, to try out your old patterns. But hopefully you might try out some of the new ones. Give them a go. Let me know. And don't forget that we do run a competition. Um, so um, take any of the patterns that I've tied today, tie them up, whack them in the Facebook group, um, um, Fly Fishing UK Still Waters and Rivers, um, and um, we'll make a, make a decision and uh, somebody will win some freebie materials from Semperfly. Um, and uh, those people who have had them already have, uh, have really um, been very happy with, with what I've sent out. Um, so um, I'll be back again next week. Um, assuming that the social media gods allow me back on. Um, but have a good weekend, everybody, and uh, tight lines. <laughs>